What's up mates, so today's video will be a kit review and the model I'll be reviewing is this Type 5 Cheery from Fine Molds. What we have here is a pretty decent sized box with a nice painting and it's also surprisingly tall. One thing that caught my attention are these metal barrels on the side, but they're unfortunately sold as an aftermarket from the same brand. I find this quite disappointing because as a customer I would happily pay an extra, let's say 10 euros to have those in the kit if it meant easier and more detailed build. So let's see what's inside. Okay, light brown plastic, I like that. And before we start unpacking the spruce, let's go through the instructions, because that's how I always inspect my new kits. There is a lot of information about the tank written in Japanese, but because I can only read a few hiragana symbols, there's not much I can learn from this. Nah. We also have some graphics here showing the engine, and also a photo of a real tank, but don't get fooled, this is a Type 4 Cheeto, and the text is probably mentioning it as Type 5's predecessor. There's also an illustration of the real tank, which is drawn using a real photo. And because you guys know I'm gonna build this kit in the upcoming videos, I'd like to give you a small hint with this. Next we have more diagrams. And these look like scans of real plants and I truly appreciate the technical research of these people and that they want you to know they did their homework and to also show you the history of the real thing. And finally, the actual assembly steps. We're starting with some drilling from the inside, followed with some road wheels, and this shows that there's a fighting compartment floor for some reason. Here we are assembling the suspension, here's the same thing but from the opposite side. Then on the next page we're adding the drivetrain, and then there's the assembly of the secondary gun. And it also has the internal parts including optics and everything. There's even a complete coax machine gun. Then we're adding more details and tools. Next page. Even more tools. But this also shows that there are photo edge details in the kit, which is pretty neat. The exhaust has this internal detail which is AWESOME for unspecified reasons. And the muffler is very detailed, it even has this photo edge mesh and they provide you with a jig so you can bend it into shape easily. This is something I only experienced with Tamiya and their BT7 model. I just love Japan, they have anime and awesome models. You have an option to use the towing cable or you can build the model without it. And this is where we should assemble the tracks. <laughs> 200 parts for one track run. Eh, I've seen worse. And I'm glad there aren't flexible rubber bands. The main gun is from two parts. That's a real bummer. But hey, what can we do? Plus it's not gonna be my problem. <laughs> Even the gun breach seems extremely detailed and I'm starting to feel like this kid means real business. We have again complete machine guns, so even if you decide to open some hatches, there will be a lot of interior detail visible. The turret is made from four parts, which I think is actually great, because it will make my life easier when I'm adding my own weld seams. Then we assemble the commander's cupola, and I wouldn't be surprised if the periscopes are clear plastic, although I couldn't care less for that. And finally we just put the turret together and another page add the hatches, which completes the assembly. There's also a painting and marking guide, although only this one is a real tank. The rest are made-up fictional vehicles. The last page is this made-up multi-tone camouflage, which was Japanese standard laid in the war. Let's now see those fine molds. I always like to start inspecting each kit with the hull, because it's big. The upper hull has a beautiful armor texture. In some places it looks so natural that it won't need any additional tweaking. There's also some very nice weld detail, which is unfortunately not everywhere, so if you're fussy like me, you'll most likely need to rework all of it. There's some fine texture on the front plate as well, although this one isn't so nice. Same goes for the engine covers. This one is once again beautiful, and what really got me are these bolts. This incredible small detail reminds me of some Dragon kits when they were the best on the market, like their Stug models from a few years ago. 
There's nothing special about the lower hull, except this hole which is there for some reason, and this weird grainy texture which kinda feels like a kit from the early 2000s. This however should get smoothened out with a few good coats of primer. Let's now take a look at the spruce. Oh wait, here's the decal sheet with those fictional markings, and there's also the promised photo edge, and also clear periscopes. These sprues are duplicates, and they consist mostly of drivetrain parts. The detail is very crisp, and the only thing I can point out are the seam lines on the wheels. I guess this can't really be avoided, but I also started keeping small traces on them on purpose, because they're often visible on real vehicles, and maybe I'll do it here as well. Here we have some turret parts, and once again there's some nice armor texture, and also very nice weld detail, which I might end up reworking nonetheless, but hey, it's there and it looks good enough. Surprisingly the cupola parts, which should be cast steel, have no texture, but this will be an easy fix. The second bag holds some smaller parts. This seems like an entire sprue of secondary gun parts, and it's nice to have the barrel in one piece. But unfortunately the muzzle is not hollow, and it will need to be drilled out. This other sprue looks like it's filled with the main gun parts, and I kinda like this layout. You don't have to search multiple sprues to build one subassembly. I'm looking at you, Trumpeter. Yeah, so the main gun is from two parts, that's a bummer. But it's not like it's my problem. Here we have some bigger parts, and once again the texture on the back plate is just beautiful. Just as much as the contrast between that and this smooth panel. These are the non-visible parts, like the firewall and the undersides of the hull, some hatches, and the front hull plate with more texture. The tow cable is quite a disappointment. The detail is poor and there's also a lot of flash. At least the towing eyes are okay, so these can be removed and fitted with new rope made from copper wire. But I guess most of us lazier modelers will just decide to not use it and move on with our lives. And the last bag is full of track links. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 sprues in total, and this ugh, ugly dark olive plastic and they look very delicate, so I hope they'll survive all the weathering procedures. What's disappointing are ejector marks on each part. Well, there's nothing that can be done about them on the outside parts, because they are sunken in between the treads, and on the inside they all seem to go above the surface, so they should be easy to remove with a hobby blade or a sanding stick. At least they don't need to be filled, so it should be quite an easy and fast job. And that's my first kit review. Might be actually my last as well, because, I don't know, I just didn't enjoy making this video. I personally don't watch kit reviews, and if I need to see what's inside, I just google some photos of the sprues and the instructions to get an idea. So what I want you to do is to tell me if you want to see a kit review every time I start building a new model, or should I stick to my usual construction and weathering videos? Let me know in the comments. And as usual, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you mates in the next one.